And to show this particular content query web part, instead of adding it to uh, a different page, creating a different page, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add it uh, this to this particular home page so you can see how this might interact. This particular setting might be useful if maybe you have a uh, company memo that needs to display to your users uh, once every couple of weeks or so. You could tag that memo with a um, piece of metadata and push that memo uh, to uh, to the front end user interface here right on somebody's home page. Uh, you could also do that by placing it in a document library that uh, the content query web part is is set to only display items from that particular document library. So what we're going to do here is just uh, edit this particular page and we'll do that up here at this toolbar. And now we just need to insert a new web part. So I'm not going to do that at the top. I'll do it at the bottom of the page. And I'll click on web part, content query, or content roll up, and then content query, and add that web part to the page. Now I have this blank content query web part. And again, what this is allowing me to do is to show items from a site. Uh, based on a query or a set of rules that you define. So I can pull back items from a particular site or a particular uh, list and specify what sort of metadata needs to qualify uh, on that document for it to be presented to me here. Again, it's kind of like an RSS feed might, uh, might work, where you're, you're pulling content from within the SharePoint document repository. Now, what you're not able to do is write content back to it. You're not able to do this across uh, site collections. Uh, so there, there are several different restrictions on this. So I'll show this web part, and then I'll, I'll mention some of the restrictions on what you're able to do here. What we're going to do first is edit the web part because there's nothing coming back for this web part at the at the moment. So we'll edit the web part and we'll just try and get a little bit of data back here to show you uh, how this works from a high level. The first thing I'm going to do is open up query and instead of showing showing everything from the site collection let's make it a bit more useful. Let's actually show items from a particular list. So in this environment I have a document library already set up for something called alternative energy uh, documents. And I'll show you this document library here in a moment. But what I'm going to do here is after I clicked on list, it gives me a tree structure of my entire site. I'm just going to jump down to this alternative energy documents where I know I have some content and choose that. And then I'm going to specify some additional uh, parameters that need to be applied to the document uh, or apply, applied to the web part. First off, I want only document content types. I don't want to see all the folders in that site. If you don't do this, you're going to see all sorts of different folder structures. And you can actually completely navigate down through a site through a, a content query web part if it's set up appropriately. I'm just going to use documents there. If I want to apply filters, uh, we'll see these in more detail uh, with Ontolica Aggregate, but if I want to apply filters so that only particular properties uh, need to be applied for something to come back, maybe only show me items with ratings of 5, or only show me items authored by this particular department or this particular person, I can set various different filters there. And that's very similar to how you would work with those within views within document libraries. The other thing I'm going to do is actually change the way the presentation uh, comes back. Right now, if I, if I select this, I'm going to have a whole lot of junk. Let's try and uh, minimize the amount of junk that comes back. I happen to know that a lot, I have a, several items that don't have any field filled in for the title, and that is what is going to be the first thing that, that comes back. So what I want to do is just change these so that uh, modified happens to be, well, let's get past grouping, let's just change the sorting so that modified happens to be the most uh, most recent items because I have some items there that uh, that should have the names applied to them. Everything else is fine for now. We'll see that title is the is the the column that's going to display. Uh, I could add additional columns if I happen to know the names of columns. Maybe I want to show the ratings of an item. Maybe I want to show some different metadata fields. But there's many different customization options that you can run through there. 
a lot of the customizations though that you'll find out on blogs do uh, involve some sort of uh, of custom development so you do need to get no code to do most things especially when you get into customizing the look and feel of this particular web part but making those settings right there we will notice that now I do have some items coming back and I was it purposely made those settings so that I didn't get a bunch of empty fields coming back when you when you first do this you might have to play around with this for quite a while before you do get some some col some columns to come back uh, with some values and what these items are that I'm seeing are just various different items within that document library, that alternative energy documents uh, document library that I was uh, I was mentioning. So what I've done is I've specified a location where I want things to come from, and I've specified uh, some particular properties that need to uh, needed to come back. And so right on my home page now, I have this content query web part that's appearing. And what I'm able to do is if I see something within this content query web part that's of interest to me, I can click on that content and I could actually uh, check it out if I would like to. So this is just working just like a document library would. Uh, if there's something that I want to just jump to and not actually open it up. So here we'll notice that I'm opening up that particular document that I chose. Uh, but I might have something here that I just want to jump to the particular location of it. Uh, no, I don't want to open up these. But, uh, but I could jump to the location and see the metadata of something. But now you're able to see you can actually pull back content. And this is very similar content again to what I have in this alternatives. Uh, document library. So we'll go alternatives here and we'll see this alternative energies documents this particular document library this is just coming back uh, from Ontolica We'll notice this document library here as well. Now in this document library, again, just like you saw in our uh, Night Garden server, there is some additional metadata that's been tagged in here. You'll notice that uh, somebody got a little lazy when they were actually titling the metadata. They called it metadata instead of calling it maybe energy types, but uh, the concepts still apply. You also notice that we have the ability to do that full document preview that I, uh, I was showing earlier. And this uh, particular site has a couple new features that I haven't shown in previous webinars. One of them is actually the ability to do an in-document search on a document. Uh, might help if I didn't have my preview in the way there. But I, all, all I can do here is with the little search box, I can do an in-document search of the document within my document library. I can see the most relevant pages of the document based off of my search. I can jump to those particular relevant pages, get a nice highlighting back here. Um, if I want to, I can zoom in and out of the document, uh, but I have a nice uh, preview capability there. Everything that you're seeing in this document library regarding metadata columns, everything you've seen with the content query web part, that's all based SharePoint. It's just this preview component at this point that is uh, is Ontolica. And uh, this is the Ontolica library preview module. One thing I do want to point out with that zoom capability that's a new new feature, if you work for maybe an engineering department that works with AutoCADs, uh, being able to zoom on a document is uh, quite a useful feature. I can pull up this preview pane and now I can zoom in, I can move around this document, I can look at my uh, various different drawings in a bit higher detail and I can actually do this from a mobile device. Uh, I'm not restricted just to doing this in a uh, you know, Silverlight based uh, web browser. I can pull this up from my iPad, for example, right on the road. But getting a little off track there on that, that document preview, we've looked now at how to upload content, we looked at how to migrate content within SharePoint, we've looked at how to pull back content with the content query web part and see it in particular uh, views based off of various different bits of metadata. I mentioned that con the content query web part has a, uh, a few restrictions to them. So what are those restrictions? What can we use it for and what can't we use it for? And then how do we get around those restrictions? So we'll jump back to my slide deck here for a second. So I'll, I'll show you a couple of those restrictions. And then we'll jump into Ontolica Aggregate, which is a new solution.
As I mentioned, the content query web part is really nice for bringing back aggregated content uh, from within a particular location, but it has a lot of restrictions around it. Uh, one of the most noteworthy is the areas that it's actually able to pull content from. It's able to collect content from within one site and really particularly within one location of a site, but it's not able to pull content maybe from across site collections or between multiple lists and libraries. You notice that when we configured the content query web part, we chose one particular document library or one particular location that it was pulling content from. We didn't say pull content from these three document libraries, for example. It can't access any of your content that's ex on external systems, maybe content that is accessed through a BCS search connector that you've, you've set up. So enterprise systems have a little bit more restrictions around what they're able to do with the content query web part. We'll also notice that the content query web part only worked for fixed expressions in metadata. It does not work for uh, search. It has no integration with that search capability. And Ontolica Aggregate not only works with, uh, with metadata, as you've seen with the content query web part, but it'll actually have a search component built into it as well. So let's take a look at Ontolica Aggregate and uh, find out where that, uh, where that beats those restrictions. So jumping back into my demo environment, we'll look at a Ontolica Aggregate Center. Now I have a uh, what we call an aggregate virtual document library. So uh, unlike a regular document library where all the content is actually stored in that particular location, this virtual document library with Ontolica Aggregate is actually going out and pulling content from all sorts of different locations. We'll notice if we look at sites over here, um, looking at uh, things coming from team sites, this petrochemical site, if I scroll down there's an alternative site. So this is something that you can't do uh, with the content query web part. And so the content is actually not located here, hence the reason we call it a virtual document library. We'll notice that just like uh, the Ontolica Search Center, or actually your, your standard SharePoint 2010 Search Center, you have the ability to refine in on content. So if I want to drill down within the structure of my particular site, uh, I can do that uh, right here with the, uh, the site refiners. And we'll notice that I had nice breadcrumb style refiners when I did that. I also have the ability to drill in on custom content, uh, and the guys have uh, put some nice uh, nice information here. Maybe I want to drill in on a particular case number if I'm like a legal firm working with content, project names, uh, in this particular site, energy type or energy product uh, project group. All this might be really informa uh, great information to be able to drill in on. And again, I can do that just like I did on my within my search center. So there's a nice search integration actually going on here. Well, notice before I do any sort of refiners, though, I actually have 240 items pulling back here. And I'm pulling back 100 items per page. This might be useful for some environments. Maybe uh, for your particular view that you want, you actually want to re refine in and have this come back right off the back with a smaller, more uh, concise bit of information. And I can do that uh, in Ontolica using similar fixed search expressions that we did uh, with, uh, with the content query web part. So all I'm going to do is do site actions and then edit the page. And we have my Ontolica aggregate web part. I'll just click to edit that. And there's all sorts of different settings that you can work with, how many results are coming back per page, the different types of uh, ways that they're coming back, different, if wildcards are applied implicitly, for example, when we do searches, a whole lot of different uh, customizations that you can work with. But just as an introduction, let's just do this fixed search expressions here. We have a couple examples. And I'll just throw in one uh, as an example. So let's do site title is like petrochemicals. Maybe I'm working with the petrochemicals team and I only want to pull content back from this particular site. Actually, let's go one step further. Let's say that my file type has to be a PDF. I could also do things like only 
return I information with metadata about infrastructure, only return items authored in the last 30 days. There's all sorts of any search expression uh, that you could enter, you could enter in right here and put that as a as a property restriction. Whatever this type this one I'm just going to do site titles equals petrochemicals or is like petrochemicals and file type is like PDF. We'll just click OK. And I won't see my changes until I actually stop editing this page. I guess you get a snapshot of them right there. But we'll notice now my fixed search expression is going through. First off, my set of results that are coming back is much, much smaller. But I'm only returning prop uh, items that are, were within my petrochemical site, and I'm only returning PDFs. Notice that I, that I can see that from those icons right here. And you, you notice here we do have that nice preview capability that uh, that's coming back here just like it was in any of my other document libraries. So uh, if, you're, if you're interested in finding out more about Ontolica Aggregate, uh, make sure to reach out. I'm more than happy to go through that in more detail. Just wanted to provide a high-level overview of that because it is a great way to go past the content query web part to actually allow you to view content and work with content that's local located within various different places of your SharePoint environment, uh, so you don't work with barriers there. And with that, I'll end our webinar on uh, managing content between document libraries in SharePoint. Uh, if you have uh, any questions about what you're able to do with document libraries, where you're able to actually upload content, how you can migrate around, how you can view content with, uh, from document libraries, uh, or items that are scattered between different document libraries, uh, make sure to reach out. I'm always more than happy to uh, take a look at environments, ap ask questions. Uh, I really like to get into those different types of projects. Uh, my email is right here, and also you can follow us on Twitter at, at Surfray. And if you are interested in a walkthrough of Ontolica Aggregate to dive into more detail, uh, make sure to check out surfray.com, and uh, you, there's a, a bit more information there and I'm more than happy to help and finally for the shameless plug uh, make sure to check out uh, uh, our book Pro SharePoint 2010 search uh, thanks for watching